What's going on? In this video, we'll be building a front-end web application with HTML and JavaScript to interact with a Flask web service. So let's get to it. In the last video, we built the back end of our application, the Flask web service. Now we'll be building the front end that will interact with that service. Recall that this is the web application we're building. We enter our name into the text box, click submit, and then this hello message is received. We know how Flask handles this data since we've already built the back end. We're now going to explore how the front end is created and how it sends and receives data to and from Flask. Within our Flask apps directory, let's navigate into the static directory. Remember, this static directory is where we can place static files, like HTML files, for Flask to serve as web pages. If we have our directory structure like this, then by default, Flask will serve any HTML pages in this location to any users who browse through these pages. Go ahead and create a hello.html file in this directory, just as I have here. Now let's open this up and check out the code. All right, if you're not already comfortable or familiar with how HTML works, remember that I previously stated that HTML just provides the structure of the web page. It does this by specifying tags that instruct what type of element each item on the page is. By element, I mean things like input boxes, buttons, paragraphs, and so on. And the tags I mentioned are denoted with these angle brackets. In this first line, we have this doc type tag that specifies what type of document this is. Now let's take a high level look at the structure of this document first before we go line by line looking at the details. We have this HTML tag that starts here, which tells the browser that this is an HTML document. And if we look at the bottom of the document, we can see the closing HTML tag. All of our code will be nested within these two HTML tags. Then we have a head and a body. The head is where we store metadata about the web page. And the body is where we specify the structure of the page and what types of elements are on the page. Within the body, we have these script tags, which is where we can use JavaScript to deal with what the page actually does. So the logic behind the page. So that's the high level structural overview. Let's go back to the top now and discuss each piece in detail. Within our head tags, we have a title tag. This is where we specify the title of the web page, which we'll see is shown in the tab of our web browser. And I'm calling this page Deep Lizard Greeting App. Next, we have a style tag. And here we can specify the style aspects of our web page. For this page, we're just setting the font size to 30px. Px means pixels. And this star means that we want all the font on our page to be this size. So then we have closing tags for both the style and the head. Next, we have our body. Within the body, we first have this input tag. This is the text box where we enter our name. We give it an ID of name input, and IDs are what we use to refer to elements on the page. Next, we give it a type attribute of text, which is what specifies that this input element will be a text box. We then have a button tag which we give an ID of name button, and we assign the text submit name to this button. So this is the text that actually is overlaying the button for the user to see and get an idea of what the button does. Lastly, we have this P tag, which is a paragraph tag that we give the ID of greeting to, but we don't specify any text to be displayed within this paragraph. This paragraph is for the area on the screen where the hello message will be displayed after we submit our name. Next, we have a script tag that is pointing to a CDN, a content delivery network, which is a web server that we're importing jQuery from. jQuery is a JavaScript library that we'll be making use of that works to simplify JavaScript code. We then have another script tag that actually contains all of our JavaScript logic for what to do when the web page receives input in the text box and the button is clicked. The first line in this script admittingly looks kind of funky if you've not worked with jQuery before. If you want to grab some HTML element from the page and do something with it, we need a way to refer to that element. 
With jQuery, you can refer to an element by typing dollar sign parentheses, and within the parentheses, you pass the ID of the element you want to work with, prefixed with this pound or hash symbol. So here we're referring to the element with the ID name button. Looking back up top, we can see that's the ID we assign to our button that the user clicks after entering their name in the box. So on this element, we're calling the jQuery function click. To click, we pass a callback function that contains the logic for what to do once a user clicks our button. So if a click event happens, we define a variable called message, and we set it equal to a JavaScript object. This allows us to organize data into key value pairs. To create a JavaScript object, we place all our key value pairs into curly braces. Here, our object only contains one key value pair, and the key is name. Let's see what we're setting our value to. Well, we're referring to the element with the ID name input. So looking back up top, this ID is the ID we assign to our input box. So we're getting this element and calling the jQuery function val on it. Val returns the value from an element. In this case, the value will be what the user typed into the text box, so presumably it will be the user's name. We then call the jQuery function post by using this dollar sign dot notation. The dollar sign represents the jQuery object, and post is a function that sends data to a web service using an HTTP post request. And remember from last time, a post request will be sending data. To the post function, we pass a string that contains the URL to our hello endpoint which we've already created. So this is specifying where we need to send the data. Next, we specify what to send. And that's going to be our message variable we created earlier that contains the name from our text box. Before we send our message, we need to stringify it using this json.stringify function, which will basically just format our message variable, which was a JavaScript object, into JSON. And remember, we know that our endpoint is expecting the data it receives to be in JSON, so that's why we're formatting it as such here. Okay, so we have where to send and what to send. Now the last argument we pass is a function that specifies what our web app needs to do once it receives a response from the web service. In this case, we're grabbing the element that has the ID greeting. So looking back up top, remember that's the ID we assigned to the paragraph tag, which is currently empty. So we get that element, and then we call the text function on it. This function will set the text in the paragraph, and we're setting that text equal to the web service's response that it sent back to us. We're actually calling response.greeting. If you recall, the response we defined for the hello endpoint was in JSON, and it had a single key value pair. The key was called greeting, and the value for greeting was the string hello plus the name it received from the web app. So we're setting the text of the paragraph on our web page to be equal to the string hello deep lizard, or whatever name you chose to submit. And lastly, we're also logging the response we get back from the web service to the JavaScript console. We then close our function that handles the response, and then close the function that handles the click event. And finally, we close the script, body, and HTML tags. Now, if your Flask app isn't already still running from last time, let's go ahead and start it up. Then we need to browse to the hello.html page we just built by browsing to the IP address of the Flask server, colon 5000, slash static, since that's the directory where our HTML lives, slash hello.html. Go ahead and test out your app by supplying your name and hitting submit. We've now come full circle by creating a front-end web application and a back-end web service and pass data back and forth between the two in the form of HTTP requests and responses. Make sure you're comfortable with this because next we'll be seeing how all this works with our Keras model. Let me know your status in the comments. And also, if you struggled with any of the HTML or JavaScript, Put that in the comments too. For all of you who are already fluent with JavaScript and HTML, feel free to help out anyone in need. And I'll see you in the next video.